I'm Lise Avery of Anything Goes Internationally Syndicated Radio. I'm sitting here with Alan Pepper, the uh, co-owner of the legendary New York City nightclub, The Bottom Line, and Greg Bendian, the series producer for the Bottom Line Archives series of recordings that we can expect in 2015. Hi, guys. Thanks Hi. for being Hello. here. Thank you. And uh, we can expect a number of recordings that will come from these archives recordings, but the very first one that we can expect to be released is the Brecker Brothers, is that right? Yes, there are actually going to be three releases. It's um, the Brecker Brothers, Kenny Rankin, and uh, Willie Nile. And they're all coming out at the same time at the end of, uh, at the end of March. Okay. March 24th, to be March exact. March 24th, okay. And uh, you have a long and storied history with Randy Brecker, right? I know, and I know Randy since he was about 17 years old. Huh. Um, um, I was running a nonprofit organization called Jazz Interactions, and um, part of what we did is we used to, on a Sunday afternoon, hire um, jazz musicians uh, in an effort to create more employment for them and we'd run these Sunday afternoon jam sessions at different clubs around New York and I had the great alto saxophonist Phil Woods performing and this young kid who was about 17 years old um, came in and introduced himself to me as Randy Brecker and said he had known Phil Woods because he attended a jazz camp I think that Phil was uh, in charge of during the uh, uh, during that summer and he asked if it would be possible if I if he could sit in so I went to Phil and I asked him and Phil of course said okay and um, Randy uh, Randy played and he played great he was a young kid but he played great and fast forward just a little bit um, Randy was part of a group called Children of All Ages that was led by uh, the late uh, alto saxophonist Arnie Lawrence. And so it was Marvin Stam who played trumpet, Randy who played trumpet, um, Hal Gaylor um, and, and uh, Arnie Lawrence. And they were the first people that I ever saw do this thing where they combined jazz and rock. And it was an unbelievable thing. And uh, Stanley and I were gonna manage them and we got them a gig at Steve Paul's scene and Randy came and he said uh, my my younger brother is going to sit in his name is Michael just for this thing and Michael uh, Michael <laughs> sat in and, and that's how I met that's how I met uh, both guys but I have a, a long and uh, a, a, a long and very affectionate relationship uh, with uh, with Randy and just to clarify, you uh, spoke of Stanley. You're speaking of Stanley Snedowski, who was your my, partner in my the bottom partner, line. Uh, my partner um, for many, many years. We knew each other since we were about 10 years old, and we were business partners since our early 20s. Uh -huh. Now, the Brecker brothers very rarely played live. Is that right? That is right. They were so busy in the New York and really international recording scene uh -huh. when there was such a thing. So they were doing soundtracks, they were doing solos, they were doing horn sections, they were doing anything that you needed the top-notch players for. And that was true of all the guys in the Brecker Brothers band, which was Steve Kahn on guitar, Don Gromlick on keyboards, Will Lee on bass, mm -hmm. Chris Parker on drums, and David Sanborn was the third horn out front, mm. which uh, is another long relationship because the Sanborn went to jazz camp with Randy, and that's how they knew each other <laughs> as teenagers. You know? So when they all started playing <clears throat> together, just getting together to play through charts, it was on Carmine Street in the village, um, in the building where... Chris and Steve and Will lived, and they would get together once a week to play, just to play through stuff. Uh -huh. uh, they were not the Brecker Brothers at that point. They were just a rehearsal band. And what happened was Randy got a call from Steve Backer, who was booking talent for Clive Davis and uh, this new label, Arista Records. Uh, if you guys will call the group the Brecker Brothers, we'll sign you. Huh. And Randy said, we had never thought of calling ourselves the Brecker Brothers. That yeah, it never came up. So once they s called their band, the Brecker Brothers, they recorded their first album in 75. 
and they played the club in 75. And then in 76, their second album, Back to Back, was recorded and they performed at the bottom line again. There was no tour. There weren't a ton of gigs. So we have a very rare recording of this band in you know top flight form. Um, and we also included a bonus track from the performance in 75. So it's, it's quite a historic document of, of jazz meets funk meets rock meets whatever you want to say they were very open to to putting it all together and really the pioneers of fusion and the term fusion that gets so overused and misused but with the group dreams in 70 and 71 which was michael brecker randy brecker willie don grolnick billy cobham who would go on to to be in the mahavishnu orchestra with john mclaughlin they had a contract on columbia and they were recording jazz rock Mm-hmm. And, and Stanley were, and I also presented mm-hmm. Dreams yeah. at, the, at the Village Gate. And that was the first time the Brecker brothers played in a group together. Uh-huh. So Dreams is kind of the proto version of the Brecker brothers. And so this is the only official live release of by the, the Brecker or, brothers ever. It is the ever. only official live release of the Brecker brothers. And um, it's the original lineup. There were others that would follow, but it's the original lineup of the Brecker Brothers playing material from the first two albums. Now, you said that the Brecker Brothers combined jazz and rock, but they also used a lot of effects on their instruments. In order to do so, yeah, because they realized that (coughs) they had to compete with guitarists, and that a lot of the rock stuff, I mean, let's face it, it's Mm guitar-driven. So how do we get horns to stand up to blaring electric guitars? And Randy told me the story that they were using pickups so that they could be amplified and loud as, as, as the guitars. But at a Dreams rehearsal, John Abercrombie didn't show up, but his Wawa pedal was sitting there on the floor. <laughs> and he said, well, what if I put, plug my pickup into that thing? And he started by doing that, and then he went on to add distortion and and echo and and different kinds of sounds so that they would essentially sound like guitars and Michael did the same thing there was also a a a thing called the funk box Uh which kind of was a type of wah-wah without the pedal and so you hear on this recording that it goes from a guitar solo to a trumpet solo or vice versa and they're equally strong and just as in your face as any guitar solo could ever be. Um, and that's how they kind of jumped further into the rock world because they were as electric as any guitar. And people who are interested in purchasing uh, the Brecker Brothers release um, of the Bottom Line Archives or any of the others. Everything's on Amazon right now mm-hmm. for pre sale. Okay. And bottomlinearchive.com. Archive singular, bottom line, archive.com. Okay, good to know. We'll look for it.